Good afternoon, and yes, we are live. Uh, welcome to my daily Facebook Live. Uh, if you haven't seen me before on Facebook Live, I'll give you all the details in a moment. If you're watching on YouTube, it was on Facebook Live first, and I'll give you all that information at the back end of the broadcast. So welcome to episode 680. The topic today is attention men, how to have a great first date and how to have um, have your lady do have a good great I can remember how I said that. I said, said some of the lines of uh, men how to have a great first date and how to make sure the lady has a great first date too. That's about what I was trying to say. So I'm, I'll maybe edit the title afterwards. But that's what I think I said. Anyway, welcome to my daily broadcast. <laughs> um, my name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, inspirational speaker, and I help women create balance in love, life, and business. And also help them find good relationships. And I've been, I do these talks every day now for over two years called Messages for the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart, hence the MFTM abbreviation. And that's because I'm a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine, um, which informs my work, also informs these talks. And so today's topic actually was inspired because I put a post up on Facebook today and only had one person respond. So she gets to have the Facebook Live in her honor. Um, my friend Karen had asked a question about that masculine feminine stuff in dating and and how to help them understand how to have women relax in those dates so this is going to be a kind of a how-to but it's, for, it's not just for men it's for women too because ladies you can set yourself up for success this way and of course you can share this any men you know or men you might be dating to give them some clues um just make sure i did all the housekeeping yes i gave introduction gave the title also said we can find me okay so let's get into it <laughs> sometimes my broadcasts are easy to start Sometimes they're a bit clump, clung, clumbersome, clunky and cumbersome. So this should be graceful and easy is the plan. So welcome to my talk. If you want to interact, feel free to do so. You can interact, talk, questions, everything else. So the intention here is to actually inform men as well as women how you can have a more conducive, enjoyable and, and um, time valued date. I'll say the opposite of time wasting. So we'll get into it. All right. So first of all, I'm going to drop some teachings here about masculine and feminine polarity, as well as gentlemanly conduct and some other thoughts as well. The structure may be different from what you're expecting, and I may not cover all the bases. So I'm giving you the framework that I'm going to jump into. So let's jump in, shall we? In dating, there's been a trend where women have had to run the dates. I started being and receiving into that many years ago, which is why I'm passionate about helping women change their paradigm now. And what happened was, to put it structurally, is that men, women have been trained or in, have, have been required by the environment that they work in, most of the time it's work in an environment like that, to be in the masculine. Now, I talked about this stuff before, but I want to give this a, in a framing of dating and for how men can help women in the dating arena, because the challenge is that for a lot of women is they, they, they adopt the masculine way of doing things to get things done and don't remember they had done it so they don't, don't know how to disengage and don't have men knowing how to help them disengage. I think that made sense. This is a fresh topic, so it's definitely... Um, <laughs> I'm hoping it's going to be fully baked by the time I deliver it, but it feels a bit half-baked right now, so let me just tune in for a second. Um, so I already know what I want to tell you at the back end, but I want to, I want to know what to put in the front of it. So first of all, there's a structure that women have been trained to be like men in the business world. So they copy like men, act like men. It's been that way for the last whew, 40 years. And so the culture we have has been out of alignment because women have, trans, have taken that behavioral structure, that way of being like men, being in their masculine, basically, into the dating world, dating world too. And I'm not... I'm not going to throw blame here. I'm just saying the way they've been trained because the culture set it up that way. And what's happened is men have also defaulted their role when it comes to romance by letting women stay in the masculine. And I'm saying it that way intentionally. There is a common way of doing things, it seems, in the dating world where men don't step into their responsibility around women, which I'll give you what that is in a moment. And women haven't either intentionally made space for men to take up that, that role or haven't haven't trusted the man enough, and this is a key one too, to let him lead. And lead is the key thing here. The dating structure, is that right word, the dating framework, beyond the stuff about environment, what you do and everything else, is 
traditionally the values are that the man leads and is in charge of the date. A lot of women are sick and tired of having to do that for themselves. So men, listen up. This is a key that you can use in a very simple way. It's not about you've got to keep paying for everything. So that's part of it, but not, not, not required. And I'll give you a thing about that in a moment. It's more about the fact that you take charge to lead. Now, for some men, and I was like this myself, there was a certain fear of doing that because we worry about having the woman be upset by our choices. Because the thing is, sometimes as us men, we don't have a lot of imagination, <laughs> somewhat, when it comes to planning dates for our partners, especially when it's a first date or second date, we don't necessarily come up with something original. Now, some men are very creative, so I'm just giving you generalities here because a lot of men, unfortunately, are defaulting into a simplistic way of doing things. The challenge is that men, a lot of men are afraid of actually doing that because they're afraid that the woman they're going out with is not going to be impressed, not going to like them, not be interested. So a lot of women are either not being willing to say anything, which is another piece I want to talk about, or they want to run the ship their own way, or they put up with what is. The old fashioned way was man run the ship, would run the ship, the woman would follow along, it'd be fine, it'd be wonderful, it'd be the way it would be. But unfortunately we've changed since then, or fortunately we've changed since then. This is the thing, gentlemen, and I'll get to that part in a moment too, men, <laughs> when a woman gives you feedback, because it's not what she wants, she wants to do something different. Be willing to listen without taking blame. Because one of the things that we have a tendency to do is when we think, think we've created the perfect ideal date and she goes, that's not really what I wanted. Oh, there's another thought that'll come in a moment, okay. Then it's, then it's a place where it's simply feedback and it's something that can help you make things better for both of you. Now on the other side, ladies, Please bear in mind, and I'm going to say this this way because I'm really clear about this, is that men, generally speaking, generally speaking, and I'm one of those two, been there with this, have rather fragile egos. We're very much attached to what we do versus who we are. This is a structural thing about men and women that are different. Women are more focused on who they are, and that's where their ego, their structure is based, not so much on what they do. But men are absolutely tied to their actions, their results, what they've delivered, because that's how we think we prove ourselves in the world. So we're not so attached to our beingness, but what we do is important to us. So when ladies, when you criticize what we've done, we tend to be either ashamed, take offense, or get upset. Rarely do men handle it with like, oh, okay, we'll do something different. Because we are, as men, tied to this um, proof by result. Our value is by what we've proven by result. For example, men are often attached to the appearance of the property they own or the car they have or the woman on their arm to justify their, their value by what they look like, not who they are. It's their presentation. And so results that men produce in the world is a um, measure of their value. And so ladies, when you criticize or disagree with or want to change what he's done, tread very carefully because what you're doing is risking a man's ego which I'm not necessarily a bad thing or a good thing just a thing <laughs> you're risking a man's ego when you step onto his creation so to speak so that's one piece and that's a big framing one I didn't plan on going there but it's what came up but the other part is is that ladies another part is trusting men now this is a challenge I know because in the me too conversation and all the other stuff that's going on right now for a lot of women out there, it's hard to trust men in any shape, way, way, shape or form. So going on dates can be a very interesting business for women who are afraid to let the guard down because they're not sure if this guy is going to be honorable, respectful, a gentleman, or something worse than that. So hold that thought a second. I want to go back to gentlemanly conduct. Okay, so another one for the men. I'm going to ping pong back of all it seems because that's what's coming up. So gentlemen, when you are with a woman, there are certain things you can do very simply that are extremely um, courteous and effective. I talk about gentlemanly conduct many times in past videos, and it's something I'm very passionate about because a lot of men have forgotten how to do it or just don't bother doing it, too lazy on it. Being a gentleman means that you open the door, you open the door for the woman, the car, the house, the restaurant, wherever you're going. You also help them on with their coats if it's not if it's not warm, like it's getting warm now in, in LA. But if it's cold weather, help them on with their coats. Hold the chair for them. Be respectful. Let them go first. These sort of things 
will build trust with her. Now, it also requires the men that you follow up with being trustworthy because some men do that and are still, let's say predators, negative, controllers, other stuff too, but I'm not gonna get down that, down that part. So that's the stepping stone. Okay, back to the ladies for a second. Allow a man to lead. And, and I'm gonna say this carefully, Sometimes it means letting him make mistakes, as in maybe taking to a steak bar when you're a vegetarian, he forgot, or he doesn't know, he didn't ask. There are things that we, <laughs> we men are not necessarily the most um, aware of what's going on. So sometimes it helps if you do inform us of some information we can act upon. So rather than treading on the, 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 the plan we've got, mention in past things like, by the way, just so you know, I have an allergy to peanuts or or I, don't, I only eat fish, or whatever that is. So he has actually, because one thing is, one thing that's good about that, when you tell a man what you do like, what works for you, it makes his life easier, and he's a lot happier when he say, oh good, I know exactly where to go now. So he can look like a great success, because he did what works for you, because you told him. This can work really well together, but it, it's, it's having an adjustment in the process. So part of it is being informative to help him lead, so you're not taking the power away from him, which is the other thing women tend to do in relationships and in dating, but also that you give him enough enough um, information, support, sub, um, ideas, that he can act on it in a way that is successful for both of you and you can both enjoy the date. The part of that that worked too, and this is one thing my friend was asking about, was, ladies, I know when you, when you go on a date, it'll be much easier, much more ideal, much more um, pleasurable, if you can relax and not worry about anything. Because most men, no, I'm not gonna say it that way, it doesn't work. There are men that are able to take care of you, and there are men that basically have no clue what they're doing. There's a range in there as well. One of my friends talks about this in his work, and he, he did a web, um, he was on a summit or something, but I loved it because he said this phrase, and, I, and, and this is my friend Brian said this, um, Sorry, McCall, what are you saying there? Whoops. Damn, this is quite a comment. Let me see you there. Hi, McCall, by the way. Good to see you. You learned over time to pick a date activity that you like and that you will enjoy. Go to a place I'm fam you're familiar with and enjoy. Ideally, a place where the staff know me, know me as well. And then lead, lead, lead. I've learned to give zero Fs, <laughs> zero fucks, about trying to please her because it put, puts her in charge. She will not be pleased by that. She wants to have a great, she wants a great experience and 90% of that is structural, planning, execution of the plan, etc. If I am at ease, it's easy for her to relax and be at ease too. That's a good point, actually. Yes, thank you for that. Because I'm, I'm, I'm putting things on the table that may shock some people, and this is actually very helpful to say that. The thing about it also, just to be clear, McCall, <laughs> is those things you may be comfortable with, ideally, are things where a woman is actually enjoying herself. Because you might have picked things that are very manly type stuff that she goes, I feel a bit you know, out of place there. So I understand that your choice would be to include that. So switching back gears to what I was just following on, because that was a great point. Thank you, McCall, I appreciate that. Um, one of the things, this, this thing my friend said, I think it was a really cool one, is some about fem women being able to relax into their feminine means that a man has to be, to use the polarity conversation, to move into his, his masculine. Because the chemistry of relationship, the chemistry of attraction, no, 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 you, of course you're not, you're not big totally guy stuff, exactly. I, I know you're on the same page as me, I understand totally, yeah. <laughs> I made a mistake once, so I'd never do that one again. So just to be totally transparent and to <clears throat> get a little warm under the collar. I, yeah, won't, won't make that mistake again. That's why I tell people don't do that. Been there, done that, not good. Um, <laughs> so in the context of the, of the polarity piece, because I look at polarity as being a way of creating chemistry, and if you're going on a date romantically, it's important Things that you enjoy that can be mutually enjoyed. Yes, exactly. Great. Yeah, you, you did say it. I missed it. Thank you, McCall, for reminding me. <laughs> Chemistry is one of those things that some people think is only there at the beginning, and if it's not there after at the beginning, forget about it. it. Doesn't happen. I disagree with this. I've, I've, I believe, and I've learned that what I think is true, is that chemistry is a connection that can be restored and can be built over time. It's not something that only happens once. Because chemistry is not like a lightning strike that happens once and it's gone. It can happen multiple times. And the way it works is when the two people in the in partnership, but this is primarily talking about men and women, but it works in gay relationships too, 
is the polarity of masculine and feminine because masculine and feminine are not gender specific although masculine is better generally in men and feminine generally okay in women again it works in gay relationships where the genders are the same so that's why i'm saying it works for both because it's energetically polarity based because it's the polarity of masculine and feminine like poles on a magnet north and south poles that create the polarity of attraction that pulls people together that's the chemistry and i believe frankly that polarity and chemistry work together when men and women really get where they stand and so if you don't have that chemistry with somebody it may be the fact that you don't have in that moment because this is the thing polarity is changeable that you don't have chemistry because the masculine energy and the feminine present feminine energy are not very present in the two people and again normally it's men and men own masculine women own feminine it does work sometimes the other way around naturally i did it in the past unnaturally just from what i said before on the broadcast where I was in my feminine without realizing it, and I was talking dating women in the masculine who weren't meant to be there either, but I didn't understand how to take charge and create the space for that to shift. So, McCall, you're saying, in your view, chemistry is an energy that is manufactured by men and consumed by women. I, I'm using chemistry to mean the attraction. So I don't, mean, I, don't think, I don't think I'm talking about quite the same thing that you may be talking about, because women don't consume it, at least not in my vernacular, so I'm not sure, we're, maybe different chemistry. Um, sound like vampires or something. <laughs> um, that's a whole other conversation about narcissism which I'm not going to go into because that's not this topic I've talked about that before in other places and I might do it again sometime when it comes up again so putting this piece together again so in, in dates it's helpful for a, a man to help a woman help a woman relax into a feminine by really occupying the masculine space this is one of the things that I've noticed and I was, talking to, I was going to talk to a friend of mine about this because she talks in the masculine a lot and she said the thing is she doesn't find men she can trust and I'm feeling if she found a man who really owned the masculine space she could let go and relax and let him take care of that and she would then drop into a feminine that's an unproven theory right now in that case but i believe that's the truth so for women to be in their feminine and to relax into their feminine when they're on dates especially when they've been working all the time when a man can occupy the masculine space from a really authentic place which is open for me the way i shortcut it is open heart and strong spine which means focus taking care of stuff getting things done but from a caring compassionate place that's my my referencing that may work for you too, I'm not sure. The way that one of my friends, getting back to my friend Brian, who talks about this, one of the, he was on a summit, I think it was a summit or an interview, I heard him a couple of years ago say this, and he said, that, or maybe in a Facebook post, he said the three favorite words that a woman wants to hear, and I love this phrase because it worked in what I was talking about, is not I love you. The three words that a man can say that helps a woman relax into her feminine and trust him even more and like him even more is this, I got this. To have a man say, I've got, meaning I've got this, meaning I take care of this, it's a profound, for a lot of women, allowance that he will take care of things for her so she doesn't have to take care of it herself. Now, we're dealing with a modern culture nowadays. You know, this is the modern world, the new millennium. For some people, it's very challenging to occupy that space without having to get things done, make things happen, and always drive things forward. It's, this stuff is timeless in a way. We have the opportunity to restore a sense of respect and honor with each other men and women because men and women are both guilty of ignoring that over time where it allows us to be much more respect respectful and honoring in a relationship which is actually a lot more sexy when you do it the right way so to take that phrase i got this is for a man to really take charge to lead not to not to not to control the different lead and control are two different things but to lead in the in the the, the date and she can take charge at different points along the time too because it's kind of the fun to play that way. But when a man has it anchored and solid, she can then play. And frankly, guys, if you let your woman play in that energy, you'll have a lot more fun in the, in the process. So I'm just looking at anything else because this is, this, is this is a bigger piece of the puzzle um, because it's really about the transformation of how people have been dating or should say people, hey, people haven't been dating the right, the most effective way for a long time. Sorry, McCoy saying it again. Oh, oh yes. Ha. Huh. We are on the same page here, but in your observation, women talk as if chemistry is something that is mutually present or spontaneously present. She can contribute it too, but it is unlikely that she will contribute her chemistry first. I used to enter the space as equals, and over time, so I have to put my chemistry in space first. See, this is where I, I, I'm using different wording for this, and this is why I like this, this. Let me put this on the table this way. I understand what you mean. Chemistry is definitely when it's looked upon as being this um, elusive pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. It's definitely something that team, people want to grab hold of to sort of control and to consume in a way. The way I talk about polarity is this, is because 
there's something about, and this is the work I've done for the last 12 years with the different teachers, is the polarity dance is one when, when men occupy the masculine and the women own the feminine. We're saying, and, and once you put your chemistry, your chemistry foot in the pond, then she gets to play if she wants to. Interesting. See, the thing for me is, again, because I talk about polarity as being a generator of chemistry or a creator or even a stand for chemistry in the sense I use it, is that when a man is in his masculine, if she's in a masculine, it may not be necessarily as effective when she's in a feminine. Now, I, I'm just reflecting on some past experiences where it was definitely a competitive masculine energy between the man and the woman. It was very fine, very sexy at the moment, but it's not sustainable. The chemistry of attraction, the chemistry of pulling together, that sort of chemistry, I believe, is what I'm really calling polarity, I guess. Because polarity is that magnetic polarity between masculine and feminine energies that brings people together. And to directly answer my friend's question from, that started this talk, because she asked me earlier today, the, the, the dance of the masculine and feminine polarity in a relationship is a role that a lot of men have abdicated. Women have too, and that's one of the challenges I said is at the beginning, is that a lot of women have been so caught up in the um, do, 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 getting things done in, in the world, that they're stuck in their masculine, that it takes a man a lot of, um, sometimes a lot of practice to own his masculine space so strongly, like to, to put, his, put his flag in the ground, so to speak, so strongly that she doesn't need to keep running that. And it is a choice. It's not like you can say to her, you need to relax now, I'll take care of this, because that can be in, in her face and it won't be pleasant. But by holding the space energetically and to really con be a container for her to flow within, for a lot of women, they finally go, oh, well, hang on a second, this guy I can trust because he holds a space I can lean on. And that creates the flow. One of my old teachers talks about um, how the feminine is like a massive river running down the course. The masculine is the banks of the river, the structure, the framework. Because without the river, without the banks, the river would just be a lake. And so the power of the feminine is supported by the masculine structure. Not that she can't do it herself, but it creates a much more um, integrated and a, a, I want to say collaborative, but it's certainly a complementary way of being together. So for me, that, that polarity piece is that men create a grounded, solid space, the presence energy, that for a lot of women is the thing they haven't experienced for a long, long time. So men, if you're watching this, this is the key, by the way, to create a different space for women than they used to when you're on a date, when you go out with them, is to create a space so grounded and so solid that she can walk on it in her trust energetically and feel safe, feel heard, and feel respected. And when women feel that, they will relax into their feminine, ideally, not always, but generally speaking, they will. And the date can go much, in a much more flowing way. But the thing about it is, it can only work if it's being authentic about it because I know men that put that on as a show, as an act, and then they forget about it and relax about two minutes later. And she's like, where did the guy go? Because he didn't stay in the true place he should be in. So this is a place of beingness and, a, and not just a place to practice, it's a place to be. Yes, so I'm calling me saying, that. so you agree, chemistry leads to polarity by you taking charge, leading first, yes, yeah, she then has space to go into a feminine, and you make it super clear that you're leaving that door wide open for her. At that point, it's up to her to walk in or not. Yeah, yeah, you're right. So we're on the same page, as usual. <laughs> Thank you, McCall. I appreciate that. Um, yes, I did just say that. <laughs> That's the other thing, by the way. Comments typed, I think, take about 30 seconds to get to the screen of the person talking. I've been watching other people's Facebook Lives when I post something, like comment on their Facebook Live. It takes a good 30 seconds before they go, oh, thank you for the comment, because, you know. So it's not a direct, immediate response. Anyway, so to wrap this up, I think I've given, I've, I know I've dropped some truth bombs along the way. Um, the, 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 the fragile ego piece is a big part of it, yeah. It's <laughs> so slow, yeah, right. <laughs> By the way, if you're watching this on YouTube and you wonder who I'm talking to, you have to watch the Facebook Live to know what's going on. Um, and I'll get to that in a moment too. So here's some, here's some thoughts to, to wrap this up. Dating is a place to explore how to be in partnership as well as a place how to entertain partnership. So for men who go on dates, I encourage you to look at how you can present yourself in who you are, not by what you do. And I talked about that earlier about the doing this is what we're trained to do, but the being this is where we can really grow. And for all of men, they don't know how to be anything except what, by what they do. They're a doing machine. They don't know how to be present. And that's the challenge for a lot of men is to grow into that space. When you can bring that presence in, then that invitation, as, as McCall put it, is there for the woman to move into a feminine. That can create a difference in the dating arena. And I think my friend who's, who asked this question will get this point clearly now. At the same time, ladies, 
it's also important that you choose more wisely too because a lot of women have been burnt so many times by bad dates they're not willing to or able to choose clearly when they want to find the right man so for a lot of women it's about refining your sorting system refining your methodology of how you meet dates i did talk about this um i did a couple of talks earlier I did one on sunday about why facebook's a better dating app than tinder that was an interesting conversation um and i'm not going to go into it here but you can go watch that one and then secondly i did a talk um yesterday yesterday about um about plenty of fish so that was about why apparently if you put disney in your profile you're three and a half times more likely to meet your meet your match your partnership than you will any other way it's a weird it was a weird article but i talked about it anyway so in this case choose more carefully i would suggest meeting people in real life as in I'm starting to realize I, I don't know, I don't have a, a, a thing against dating apps, but I do have a recommendation about meeting people through connections in real life, social engagements, events, service projects, things you can get out of the world and meet people. Because when you meet people there, your radar is much cleaner. And for women out there, you have an intuition that you may have forgotten to tap into. And so when you're out meeting men, you can be more clear, more successful and more effective by watching and seeing what men are about. It's hard to do that through, date, through dating apps. That's one reason I'm more, more um, suggestive of doing things in, um, in real life. Yeah, I'm just noticing the energy just went out up from... I guess I'm complete with that topic. Because <laughs> I was like, I had an idea and just went poof. These talks are never controlled or scripted or planned. They just come through the way they come through. So I appreciate you being with me. Thanks, McCall, for in interacting so much in this broadcast. I appreciate that. And Karen, when you watch this, I hope this has been made, made some sense to you. If you have any further questions, please put in below and I'll respond when I sign off. Um, this is my daily Facebook Live at 5 p.m. Pacific time. It goes out on my personal page first, and then I put the replay on my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author. and also goes into my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby. Please subscribe to that channel. And there's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine. Um, ladies, if you're looking for love in all the wrong places and you really want to get some help, you can reach out to me. I'll put a link in the comments to get on my calendar to have a chat with me because I am opening up some spaces for coaching clients and offer, and possible other things too. So if you want to find out more, I'll put the link in the comments. And um, if you have any questions about this broadcast or about dating in general, oh, I'm risking this one, um, please put it in the comments below and I'll respond when I sign off. I appreciate you being with me as always. Thanks for watching. Um, take care of yourself. And I'll be back again tomorrow, same time, same channel, personal page on Facebook at 5 p.m. Pacific time. I thank you for watching. I'll see you again soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye.